far as a blending perspective. We ultimately did end up going with a 503 blend. Um, the Nico Rustica is kind of unique in the fact that it utilizes a Rustica tobacco called Chivagre. I think I've already talked to you guys about that. It's a locally grown strain out of the Rustica family. So it's kind of a um, it's kind of a rough cigar. It's rustic. It's rustic. The name is apt for what the product is. It's a little dirty. It's a little rough. It's a little. It's not round. It's not elegant. When I say round, rounded, <coughs> rounded flavors. I mean, it's definitely something that you're either going to say, "Wow, I really like that," or "Wow, you know what? That's just not for me." But it's definitely a very interesting cigar because you will probably have never ever had the opportunity to taste this tobacco before this. So it is one I recommend you guys give a fair shake to and see what you think of it. And if you really hate it, I don't really care. <laughs> it, it, is that a, that's going to be a new line? Here's the issue. The issue is capacity. Yes, I would like for it to be a new line. Will we be showing it at the trade show? I don't honestly know whether we will or will not. The question is how will we make it even if we show it to sell it because we keep selling here because they're yours. You know, we have, we're, we're so maxed out capacity-wise that it's like almost not leaving room for new things. I mean, it's the same case with like Herrera Esteli. Herrera Esteli, I mean, we have to grow it slow because of the capacity limitations. So do you see it more like a core or more like what you're doing with Liga Limited Production? You know, if, if we were going to do Nico Rustica, the idea behind Nico Rustica was to be a readily available kind of item. That was the intent of it. You know, that, that is where the goal was. Because when we did it, yeah, like on the underground level where it was be pretty much on the shelves on a regular basis when you want it. That is the intent behind it. That's what we're hoping for it to be. Because what's ending up happening is over time as we expand our traditional product lines, we're having to buy a lot of other tobaccos that we don't necessarily have a home for. And it's not that they're not good tobaccos, we just didn't have a blend that utilized these particular tobaccos. So when we were doing this Chilgagare project, we were very conscientious of the addition. Like for example, there's a particular Seiko that we like to buy from so-and-so, so you gotta buy this. But normally it's the other way around. It's because we want this Lajero, we gotta buy this Viso. Because we want that Viso, we gotta buy this much Seiko. So you always have to kind of balance this out. So we made a very conscientious effort in the Chilgagare Rustica project to say, okay, what will there be that would be allow us to make a lot of them and also to help balance out the loads on other products. But I mean, it didn't ultimately, it didn't end up being a cigar where we just said, well, this is the tobacco we're gonna use, so let's just make this and whatever it is, it is. We didn't take that type of approach at it, but we were very conscientious when we were choosing the blending components to try to be cognizant of the material loads that we have in the factory. So ultimately, it is designed to be a brand that we can make a lot of. The problem that we have is, who do I use to make a lot of it? Right. And that therein lies the dilemma. We'll see that in a second. So we're gonna we're gonna basically